Greetings, this is the Timeshare Traveler. Today is episode 135, 135, completing one year of travel in timeshares. My journey is coming to an end after one year. And uh, I'll, here's the overview. I had an amazing year, and I'll tell you about that. Uh, I think that's important to talk about. Um, and I wanted to go through what the critical choices were to make this work, and it really worked. Um, and, 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 and I want to kind of talk to you a little bit about the value of breaking life's routines. It's really, you know, we live, we live in routines often, and sometimes it's really nice to break it. And I'm, I plan to do more breaking of routines over time just to make sure I'm doing what I want to do. And what will I do? Uh, will I do more travel in the future? And what are my biggest obstacles I'm facing? So before I get into all the details, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the channel, and then I'll be right back. Hang in there. Hi, this is Cliff, and I'm the Timeshare Traveler. Welcome to my channel. The purpose of my channel is to educate those who love traveling in timeshares. I've been an owner, owner for 15 plus years at uh, timeshare ownership. I have elite ownership with Marriott, Hilton, and Worldmark. I have a, published over 100 timeshare video reviews, and I've published over 95 timeshare tips. I can be found on Facebook at Timeshare Trav, or Twitter, Timeshare Trav, and on the web at www.timesharetraveler.com. Well, let me start off by saying what an amazing year. I um, have uh, a little bit of sadness as it comes to a close, but what when I look back on it like I am right now, it's really amazing. And I, and I highly recommend, if there's any way you can do this, if you've already done it, you'd probably know this as well. It doesn't mean you have to do it in timeshares, well, that's what I did. You could be an RV. Um, there are trade-offs in many ways to do it. Um, but if you get a chance to do that, I highly recommend it. Um, I stayed in Hawaii for seven months of the last 12 I traveled across the country to my family reunion in Ohio and and um, to my high school reunion in Indiana. I was staying in timeshares the whole way except for a few hotels here and there. Um, traveled to the East Coast to visit with my brother. Um, traveled up from California around Arizona and did a loop. And then I traveled up to Oregon and Washington and did a loop there. I hiked in oceans, mountains, lakes, prairie, I don't know, you, you name it, I, 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 I had wonderful walks, hikes, saw some just amazing, I can't say high enough about the amazing things I've seen. I met hundreds of interesting people along the way, I'm often in Ubers, and I always ask people, like I'm in Hawaii, why, do you, why, what moved, why did you move here? Now, some of them are natives, but many of them have moved there, and this, their stories are as interesting as the story that I was on. Um, and they would ask about me, and it was kind of an interesting um, topic, and I met local people pretty much wherever I went, and I was always open to talking to them, it was fantastic. And I, I just saw beauty everywhere, you, you don't, you know, you, you don't realize how beautiful the, the even the U.S., which is mostly where I travel, it was all where I traveled actually. Um, it's just so beautiful. I'll do a trip to Europe and other places later, but that's what I did for this trip. Um, just to, for stats, I stayed in over 60 timeshares. That's more than one a week, I know. Um, and I did uh, more than 90 timeshare episodes, just uh, as far as that goes. But what an amazing year! Well, hopefully you're still with me, and. Um, and you want to, what were my critical choices that made it work? And the hardest one was downsizing um, to get, you know, I needed to get everything I needed and know just enough so I could travel in my car and have everything and not have to worry about, you know, buy groceries wherever, but just had everything but the clothes I needed and any, you know, the standard essentials. In my case, that's a, a, a coffee grinder and a, a French press because I love my coffee. Um, but each person, I'm sure you might have things. Um, the other one uh, was renting out my place so I didn't have to watch it. I mean, that 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 was felt like a big burden, so I just rented it out. And it also helped financially, so that really just moved my expenses. My travel expenses uh, were, you know, my, my rent, mortgage payments were replaced by my travel expenses. So it was a net, net, well, kind of a wash. Um, so the the issue that came up, and in my case, I had a place where I had, I had done I had bought the furniture kind of at a consignment store, and I just shipped it back to the consignment store, and it cost me a little bit. But other people, you might have to put the furniture in storage or rent out furniture, and that's that's a personal choice. Um, I have rented out. Uh, I do have one rental that it has a furn was furnished, um, so it's not that bad. Um, but but something to decide, and making sure you can pay your bills online. That's a good. That was that was uh, important. Um, I again, again, I think you have to have that sense of awe and adventure, and it can be, it can also be the scary part. Um, but need planning skills to book ahead. 
Um, you need to be way in advance. You don't want to be doing last minute things, although I did a few, but mostly uh, it was well planned out. Um, and a bucket list of places you want to do or things you want to do. In my case, I'm, I got a chance to be on all the Hawaiian Islands, so that was really great. Um, the other, the other thing I did is I did practice trips to discover problems and validate the joy. So I, I sort of figured out, wow, this is what I like to do. And this is, uh, you know, this I can do this, you know. So you had to go through, yeah, I, I packed everything and I didn't really need to go back and get anything. So that was really great. Um, and I started out with two weeks just to make sure. That was more the, oh, I, did, I, did I get enough luggage and um, or did I have too much? And then up to two months I did that before I did. Um, and again, I confirmed everything I could carry, everything I needed, and finalized what was really needed. So that whole process uh, took a while. Okay, and this is the uh, maybe the philosophical part, but it'll give you a little sense of what of sort of the awe is the value of breaking life's routines. Um, you know, this is one of the things we stay busy and we miss life happening around us. You know, I got jobs, I have raised three, I have three kids. Uh, life goals are you know open to be re reassessed. Those are those are you know a lot of stuff just happens. Um, and and it's you know stopping this this was time for me and a lot of people are afraid to be alone um, whatever um, but it's time for me and I actually assessed what did I want to do with the the rest of my life you can see my gray hair so I'm older so I need I want to make sure I take the best use of this time and I traveled while I'm still quite healthy um, but I figured out what I wanted to do what was important what I wanted to give back to community and I figured out what that what that is for me, um, and I'll w talk about that at a later date. But that I was able to do that just by taking time off. Uh, in my case, I sat by the beach, listened to the waves, and sort of thought about what I wanted to do. And it was a sort of a process that evolved over several months. And I was able to actually get started on that journey, even even during the year. So I'm I'm um, I'm heading right into the the, the reassessment that I wanted to do. Um, um, again, what do you want to do with the rest of the life? It's a single use event, so you only get one shot. Um, so that's why I think taking that time to actually really figure that out and really align with what really matters to you is really important. Um, and I and I find that new places kind of like you see different routines, you see different things, and that opens you up to new choices. So anyway, this is the philosophical th side, but hopefully you can tell um, if you you know everyone gets in routines and if you're happy with your routines that's great but sometimes breaking them just to see that you are happy with them sometimes you can reassess that yes I'm doing what I should be doing um, other question I had for myself was will I do this uh, do more travel in the future and the answer is yes um, my current plan is that uh, I'll plan to travel for three months a year I don't know how that will work out I have started that a little bit of planning for that I'm, I'm a real estate agent because I wanted to actually help build affordable housing and um, in California where I'm going to be doing that you can put a, a, a second home on most pro many properties and the, the cities and state now have made that much more possible and that basically we open up more houses that are affordable um, and I think that's that's something I want to uh, sort of as a legacy to leave, leave behind. Um, so I'm going to reassess my focus, taking time away on an annual basis. Um, so work with real estate during the peak period and then take some time away. May, may not be able to do that the first year until I get a little more established. And got to go through the process to see if I can even be successful at what I'm doing. But I have a goal to try to help uh, availability, which is a big goal. Um, I'll do some weekend travel to timeshares too, or maybe weekdays depending on um, you know what's possible. And I'll do more travel with my kids. I'm already planning to do more of that, whereas I was more focused. This was more about me, but I want to try to actually um, get them involved in the timeshares and, and so that, uh, that, you know, at some point I'll be handing them over to them. Um, and when I'm not able to use them all, I've, I've, been renting, I've been renting out some of my timeshares. So I have kind of like I can step it up or step it down um, based on how much travel I want to be. So it's working. It's it. <laughs> It's really working out um, for me, and I and I again, I don't want for you guys who might be thinking uh, that you want to do what I do. This is what you can do once you're you know not traveling as much. I might do another year of travel. Who knows? And lastly, what were my biggest obstacles? Um, you know, surprisingly enough, 
uh, attachment to some of my possessions. Um, I was I do have a small storage unit, really small. Um, we get, often get attached to memories of things, um, but it's also you have to be harsh to say, really, this is a real important memory, and only you know otherwise you end up never getting out, never getting started. So you have to try. There's a balance, kind of kind of do that. Um, and <laughs> until you go through this process, you have no idea how much clutter holds you back. Um, and it seems to be part of our society, um, part of my life, and, and part of everyone I talk to. One of the biggest things when I talk to people why why they don't do it, it really comes down to clutter, um, and that they can't just can't part with things. Um, I like to think that I've made it easier for my kids because I cleaned up the clutter, so when I pass on, they won't have to do it. Um, uh, there's also the fear of just getting started. You're going to do some new thing, and you know, like what could go wrong? You start focusing on all the negatives and stuff like that and you just kind of have, in my opinion you just have to push through that because there's so much you have to focus on the positives of why you want to do this um, that's why I started the trip so I got a lot of the basics like no you can do it okay now it's just do you want do you want to do it um, the fear of being alone I did a lot of traveling alone La later in the year I, I was traveling with people but, uh, but um, I started out doing quite a bit alone and that was really appropriate because I wanted to figure stuff out uh, but a lot of people are just afraid to do that, and so they, are, you know, they got to be surrounded by um, their, their people. Um, and again, figuring out how to do it on a reasonable budget. And again, so that was solved in my case by renting my house out. So the cost, the maintenance fees were were are basically the same uh, fees as my mortgage. And so when when I'm not traveling, I can rent them out for slightly more. So I still have some to use. Um, you know, so that's a that's the way I made it work. Anyway, those are my biggest obstacles. I hope you enjoyed uh, my my. I certainly enjoyed my year of travel, and I know you've got you got if those who follow me have got a chance to live, uh, go through all the tips and so forth that I figured out on the along the way. Anyway, I hope to give you a thumbs up on this video, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.